Well, welcome to another After the Hunt. Uh, this is where we uh, get to review and taste and comment on bourbons that I got from a recent bourbon hunt. In fact, the bourbon hunt, it was from Florida. That's why I'm wearing my special Florida Ron John hat. So uh, we had a little technical issue. We had to reset up. So if the bottles look a little lower than normal, no, Kim has not been drinking ahead of the program <laughs> like she normally does. <laughs> No, we just we had to reset and, and redo everything, but we're all good. So uh, yeah. uh, tonight looks, looks like a lot there too. It looks like it? a lot, <laughs> and I had the hardest time. I think I had the wrong jigger. I was trying to pour it and get it, and nothing mm. got equal. So I'm I'm back and forth. Oh no, that that one's too high now. Yeah, so, that happens. That yeah, prep always prep people. So um, we've got three of the bottles that I got on my trip. Two of the bottles, which is a uh, Boondocks, was a nice little gift set to 375 milliliter. Uh, we're going to put that in a special double pour uh, series. I thought that was really interesting, that set that I got. And really five is too much for Kim, I think. Too much. Yeah. Too much. So too much. <laughs> we, put, we got three regular bottles here. Uh, the first one is the Peerless double oak which i've been looking for in georgia and not been able to find and i found this at uh, regency uh, liquor in um, winter gardens i keep saying winter park but winter park is jacksonville yeah. winter, winter gardens. gardens so real nice uh, if you watch the video they had a great selection and uh, they really welcomed me and it, it was really pretty cool that they let me do uh, a tasting with uh, hirsch while i was down there uh, the second one, um, and this is not in any particular order, I found actually had a total wine in Gainesville, Florida. I'd never seen the Still Austin Red Corn Bourbon Whiskey, and just looking for, you know, releases that I can't find or uh, just they aren't, you know, sent to Georgia. And I found this uh, Red Corn Bourbon Whiskey from Still Austin. I'm a big fan of the Still Austin Musician, and so, uh, this is a bottled and bond, by the way. Then last but not least, we found a distillery right around the corner from where I was staying at my brother's house. I didn't even know it was there. A small craft distillery called Oceanside, and we went in there and we got like the king's tour of the place. We got samples, we got a, a kind of a backstage tour. Uh, we got to see their how they uh, distill, uh, and, uh, and they're actually, we got to see their still. And uh, that was interesting too, a really high tech still. Never seen anything like it before. So we've got those three balls tonight. And so it's, uh, we've got on the left is gonna be the Peerless, on the middle, the Still Austin, and on the right is the Oceanside Single Barrel. So uh, I poured about, I don't know, a little over an ounce in our Glen Caring class, and uh, about an ounce or so for Kim to put in a cocktail. So what are we having tonight? What is our cocktail? Oh, Kim? it's just the same old thing I always have. Ginger ale and grenadine, right? That's right. She loves that. Over ice. Do you like it cold? <laughs> I do like it cold, yes. So, um, this Peerless, just so you know, is uh, 108 proof, Kim. So it's, pr it's probably the uh, highest proof in the batch here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a batch, not a single barrel, but uh, I got to taste it and it's quite delicious. Everything is sticky too, for some reason. <laughs> well, that's, you probably touched the grenadine or some, at some point. Something, something. Mm. It smells nice. What do you smell? I definitely smell the oak Bourbon. and molasses. <laughs> You smell bourbon. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. I definitely get a lot of oak and molasses and sweet. Oh, she's tasting neat. Now we're really in trouble. Mm. It's a little higher proof than you're used to. Yeah, it's a little, little sharp. I think a little old-fashioned tasting, you know, like oh, it, bourbons. Yeah, very, very oaky, traditional bourbon smell. 
Yeah, that was bound went, to happen. Yeah, it went down the wrong way. Down the hatch, babe. Down the hatch. We're going to get it in the cocktail. <laughs> yeah, probably a wise thing. Cheers, babe. Wow, that's got it just a boatload of spice. A little bit of pepper. You like that? Mm, yeah, it, it's rich and oaky. Uh, I don't like all double oak style bourbon, some of them, but this has got a sweet oak and that spice, very rich and uh, actually sweeter than I thought it would be. Uh, sweeter than I remember, because I've, I've gotten to taste it in the past through a sample of from You Know Who. We all know who who. Who who? Who who? Dave who? <laughs> I'll take another sip. Cindy Lou who? I don't think she drinks. <laughs> Cindy oh, that's Lou. good. It's not, uh, I wouldn't call this an everyday sipper because it, uh, I think you might get tired of all that spice and oak, but as a special sip, a Friday night sip or something like that, just to kind of little sips and enjoy over a long period of time, it's quite good. I'm not like, sure if I like it or not. Uh, like our first pours, I, I do a recommendation and I ask him what she thinks. You know, we've got our ranking system one through five, one being Stop the video and go get it. And five, don't drink it or drink it only if it's free. It's pretty much the same thing. Don't buy it, in other words. Um, I would definitely, I would say it, it just makes a two. I, I thought about giving it a three, but I see this so little, I don't know that shopping around for the best price is a good recommendation. I do love the bourbon. So I think if you get it, and we'll list the price I paid for it on the bottom of the screen. I don't think it was exceptionally high. It's, it's, it's not an inexpensive bourbon, but it's not a $100 bourbon either. So I say, I give it a level two. I think it should be your next purchase. What do you say, Kim? I'm not sold on it. So you're uh, maybe- I'm on the fence. Uh, Borrow it from a friend? Get... I would think borrow it from a friend, but after I taste the other two, I'll have a better idea of how they compare to each other versus a number. For me, that works better. So we'll put this off to the side here. So now we're going to try out the uh, Still Austin Red Corn Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, this is only 100 proof and it's bottled in bond, which means it's at least four years old. Still lost it. Yes. Wow, that is. Uh, it reminds me of caramel corn. I get a lot of corn sweetness and caramel. I like the way that smells better. What's that one? What's that stuff with the prize in it? Cracker, Cracker Jacks. Jack. Cracker Jack. Reminds me of Cracker Jacks. Caramel and corn. It's still pretty sharp. What is this? What's the proof on this one? 100. And it's a limited release summer 2023, it says. I don't know if they're going to come out every year with it, but it is a limited re release. And I, <clears throat> I thought it was pretty reasonable in price, and we'll put that on the bottom screen too, uh, for a limited release. But uh, cheers. She, she's ready to go, I'm babe. Like, I'm oh, ready. Get let's Come let's on, get let's this go. party going. Mm, in a cocktail, that one's better than the first one. This is sweeter than the, uh, a lot sweeter than the uh, a double oak. It's a little oak. more mellow. Oh, and and, and the, the Peerless had a, a rich oakiness to it, a good mouthfeel. This is the same thing, but the richness is in the sweetness that coats your tongue. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, even for me, it's pretty sweet. I, I love it. It's not too sweet, mind you, but it is that, it is corn forward and corn and caramel, a Cracker Jack explosion. That's a lot of words. That's a lot of words. I'm just going to say it's no Buffalo Trace. Mm. <laughs> That's my favorite. 
but I do like it. Wow. It beats number one for me. For me, this is, you know, I really like the musician. And people told me that, oh, if you really like the musician, get the cast strength ver version of that. I don't know about that. I haven't tried that yet. But this red corn bourbon whiskey. Now, is it actually red corn? It's actually made from red corn. Hold it up to the light. Is it red? Uh, it's a little bit red. Yeah. Kind of orangey color. So I see that, you know, sometimes uh, you'll see, they'll talk about, I've seen white corn uh, bourbons, I've seen red corn, and I've actually heard uh, about a blue corn bourbon. I haven't tried that one yet. Well, you know, you can get blue corn tortilla chips. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the same thing. It's, I, don't, I don't think they're making this stuff up, so it's made from <laughs> red corn. Uh, for me, this is a level one. Stop the video and go and get it if you know where it's at. If you're in Florida and you've got a total wine, they're stocking this stuff and they had plenty of bottles. Uh, there was at least four or five bottles out of the stack that I took. So I say if, if you know where this is, this stuff is wonderful. Uh, there again, it's not a $100 bourbon. It's up there being a limited release, but it is absolutely delicious. What do you think, Kim? I think I need my own scoring chart. This is good. This is not my favorite. Mm, I love this. But it is very good, and I could see myself having a drink or two of this. I'm not giving any to you. I'm keeping it for myself. Okay. <laughs> Where's my bottle here? <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade you a bottle of Buffalo Trace Single Barrel. You'll I don't like... want the single barrel. Huh? I don't want the single barrel. You, don't, you just want the regular. Yeah. <laughs> you like what you like, right? Yep. But mm. that's good. That is delicious. That's good. Okay. okay. Still Austin, a number one. Now we're on to... Uh, this Oceanside Distillery, like I said, a small craft distillery, and it, it pretty, you know, they've got like one still, uh, and uh, I think three uh, fermenters. Uh, they don't make a whole lot right now, but they're growing, and uh, uh, they've got uh, a, a few different versions of b bourbon, and they also make, at least, uh, I think the owner was telling me their most popular product was a uh, coconut rum that they make. They have a uh, still that they can program for just about any kind of mash. And he was showing me it and it was, it was quite interesting. And he said, yeah, it says, we're really trying to get out the news about our bourbon special, our, our single barrels, and they have a double oak as well. And he said, but the uh, apparently the uh, coconut rum flies off the shelf. I didn't get any, maybe I should, but I'm, I'm no longer, I haven't drinking, I haven't drank rum in years, not, no longer a rum guy, I'm a bourbon guy, but uh, they let us try this uh, single barrel while we're there, along with the double oak and a couple other products, got to try their new weeded product that's not out yet, and we're going to get some media samples on that and some other things from Oceanside. Uh, Great little place if you're in the Cape Canaveral area. If you're going on a cruise ship, I guarantee you, don't go before the cruise because you're gonna want to take a buy a bunch of bourbon and you can't when do you that. get yeah yeah you can't bring that on the yeah. cruise. When you get off the ship, go see my friend at Ocean Sites Distillery and I'll I'll put the address on the scroll on the uh, in the description for you, and uh, they'll let you try their uh, different bourbons and whiskeys they have, and I guarantee you you will go home with a bottle. I went home with this uh, single barrel, so that's the one on the right. So I tasted it, I'm ahead of you. I'm ahead of you. And it's a bit sharp. Mm. I didn't smell it. Well, you know, the, um, I, um, I know that he was telling me he, he just, a lot of his bourbons had just come to uh, age. Batch is batch one. Yeah, this is it's batch, batch one. one. 104 proof. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was telling me this was this was four years old, something like that. I'll see if I can find the information on that. Put that on the screen. Okay, but uh, it is a uh, 
Florida straight bourbon whiskey. And I'll have to find out what that means, but probably means that all the, uh, where they produce the products from, the grain and other things are all Florida and not from another state, and it's not distilled in another state. Cheers. Oh, that is, when I tasted it at the distillery, I thought to myself, this is sugar cane goodness. And coming from South Florida, we sometimes would get raw sugar cane and uh, sometimes we'd get uh, cane juice for uh, pancakes because it was, just, it was just so cheap to get sugar cane syrup uh, in South Florida. Uh, I'm not sure what is their mash bill is, but this is a sugar cane delight. Uh, uh, so kind of, sugar cane is kind of like molasses if you've ever tasted molasses. Um, it's sugar, sweet. Sugar, sugar cane isn't anything like molasses. No, it isn't? No, sugar cane, um, if you're going to compare, I would compare sugar cane to like a K-Rose syrup, corn okay. syrup. Okay. But sugar cane has a very distinctive sugar taste. It, it almost tastes a little green, whereas a corn syrup is just kind of bland and sweet. This um, has got some it's a growing stalk so it kind of has that green taste to it and molasses is brown and earthy and a little bit sweet and molasses is comes from the molasses tree everybody molasses. knows this <laughs> <laughs> molasses comes from sugar it's what they take out when they refine it right well, like we I were still, about I, sugar I, last night. I, I still stick to this. To me, it reminds me of sugar cane treats I had as a kid. Uh, that comes right back. I've never tasted a bourbon that had that sugar cane feel and flavor and richness to it. And this is all sugar cane all day long. Uh, there might be a little bit of uh, dark fruit to it, but to me, it's that sugar cane vanilla and some baking spices that really define the taste. Okay, you want my uh, my summary judgment here? I do. The first one, the Peerless, I really didn't care for too much. At first it was kind of okay, but it was very sharp, and even in the cocktail I didn't care for it. The other two are very similar as far as strength and as far as that outreach of flavor from the bourbon and I'm trying to decide which one I like the best because I'm thinking it might be the ocean side Wow and for me as far as recommendations or ranking for the ocean side because it's only sold in Florida and right now in a very limited area around the Cape Canaveral area I would say you know it should be your next purchase the next time you're in Cape Canaveral I don't know what else to tell you about that. It is a, a, a special pour, a special area. Uh, you're not going to find it in your in your local bottle shop or even your Total Wine right now, but that may change in the future. Florida's and, a vacation hotspot, so. Right, and I, I, I did talk to the owner about uh, companies like Sealbox who get the word out about craft uh, distillery so I think he's going to go back to seal box again and see if he can get them on their distribution so for me I, I love the Oceanside Distillery and uh, I love the uh, Peerless but I'm gonna tell you that for me number one is that uh, still Austin red corn bourbon and then really the other two are tied because they're entirely different. I mean, you, you got that sweet oak and you've got that uh, cane sugar and I like them both equally as well. I would drink them equally as well. But that uh, still lost in for me is uh, first place with the other two in a dead tie. You know, funny thing is, you know, you said we had technical problems. We did end up tasting these before. Yeah. And before when we did it, I picked the Still Austin too, but tonight, the Oceanside for me. You like the Oceanside, wow. 
um, I, I found the Still Austin. Now, it could be that my ice has melted a little bit more in that Still Austin, but when I compare those two head to head, the Still Austin was a little bit blander, mm -hmm. and the Oceanside had a little, little tiny punch of flavor. Yeah, I, I think the, the Oceanside could be the sweetness leader. I think it could be the sweetest of the three. I, I, I like the sweetness in the Still Austin, but I actually thought that the Oceanside, uh, with that cane sugar goodness going on, was probably the sweeter of the three. The uh, Peerless, as much as I love it, that oak sometimes does come off a little bitter, yeah. but that's what Especially that's when what it goes oak, down wrong. Yeah, that's double oaks. You know, you, you take that little bit of oak bitterness with the other flavors, and that makes it unique, but certainly I think uh, the Oceanside uh, definitely had the sweetness going for it, and not overly sweet. I think I thought it no. had a good balance. I didn't think it was overly sweet, and I got credit. <laughs> so for me, uh, number one was the Still Austin for Kim. Number one was the Oceanside, mm -hmm. and. I have no problems or no regrets of finding this peerless, peerless double oak. It's mine. <laughs> it's mine. You can't have it. Well, we hope you had a good time watching our after the hunt video. We're going to do these when we uh, uh, do. If, as long as I have at least two bourbons, we're going to do after the hunt. I don't always have two bourbons that I find on my hunts, but uh, uh, we're going to drag Kim kicking and screaming <laughs> into these. Because we know that she's prettier than I am, right? <laughs> yeah, I think everybody <laughs> agrees on that. So um, we hope you will like this video, comment, and share. And Kim, thank you so much for coming You're along welcome. with us tonight. And uh, I'm going to get my number one pick out here. Come on. Until you cheers, until you cheers, cheers, and see you next time on After the Hunt.